You should know. The process may change him. Will it weaken him? Oh, no. What happened to the mountain? Was he poisoned, or was it something worse? And what did Kyburn do to him? Was it science, or something more? What did you do to him exactly? I haven't been able to get a clear answer. Oh, well, a number of things. Does you understand what we're saying? I mean, to the extent that he ever understood complete sentences in the first place. Long story short, we do not know for sure, but in the books, we get some information to work with that we do not get in the show. Now, we always have to be cautious about what people say and think in A Song of Ice and Fire, but Kyburn's one of the characters who I often believe in terms of his views on the higher mysteries, more commonly known as magic. So in this video, I'll provide evidence from the books that suggest that the poison used on the mountain included magical spells to prolong his agony. And second, I'll share my interpretation as to how Kyburn created the mountain and present as much evidence as possible so that you can build your own interpretation as well. Before we get to the details of Kyburn and the Mountain, let's briefly touch on magic and maesters. Magic is real. Many characters like to deny it, but magic has always been around, and for one reason or another, maybe the comet, during the current events of the story, magic is very strong. Now down at the Citadel, you earn a different type of metal link for the various fields of study. The field of study for magic is called Higher Mysteries, and the link for that is Valyrian Steel. Only one maester in a hundred wears such a link, primarily because studying magic is frowned upon. But there are some open-minded students, like the Stark's maester, Maester Lewin, back in the day. He studied magic and earned a link in Valyrian Steel. Although he does not deny that magic existed in the past, he didn't have much personal success with it, so he doesn't think it exists anymore, or that if it does, it's very weak. And until recently, he's right. Then you've got someone like Archmaester Marwyn, the head of the higher mysteries down at the Citadel. He's totally looked down upon. The other maesters, archmaesters, and as a result, a lot of the students don't like him. But in truth, he's arguably the most badass and coolest maester of them all. I'll expand on him in some other videos. But there's another former maester who believed in magic as well, Kyburn. People like to think of him as a mad scientist, and technically, magic is real in the world, so even when he uses magic, he's still a scientist. But one of the main points of this video is to point out that he definitely shows interest in magic, he claims to have an understanding of magic, and there's pretty good evidence that he uses magic on the mountain. One of the fields Kyburn studied while he was at the Citadel was healing. He claims to be as skilled as Archmaester Ebros, the Archmaester of Healing. But Kyburn aspired to surpass him. For hundreds of years, the men of the Citadel opened up the bodies of the dead to study the nature of life. But Kyburn began to open the bodies of the living in order to understand the nature of death. Because of this, they stripped him of his chain and booted him from the citadel. But as he says to Cersei later in the story, you can take away his chain, but you can't take away his knowledge. Kyburn's story is a little different between the books and the show, but that's not important for this video. The main thing is that he ends up at Harrenhal and uses his healing skills to save Jamie's life. If you've got a figure, in this world, Wounds like Jamie's often result in infections and death. If I had to guess, Kyburn is the most skilled healer in the entire world, even without using magic. This man is not even a maester, let alone a grand maester. That's for the best. No maester knows how to say it. So Ruth Bolton sends Kyburn with Jamie on his way back to King's Landing to take care of him, because Ruth had just secretly partnered with Tywin Lannister. In case you don't recall, this is before the Red Wedding. Bruce wanted to make sure Jamie didn't die on his trip back to King's Landing, or his new deal with Tywin could have gone bust. So in the books, Jamie has dreams. One is the infamous fever dream, which suggests that he's going to be pumped to defend Jon once he finds out that Jon is Rhaegar's son. When he woke up from this legendary fever dream, he asked Kyburn if Kyburn believes in ghosts. And Kyburn says, Once, at the Citadel, I came into an empty room and saw an empty chair. Yet I knew a woman had been there only a moment before. The cushion was dented where she'd sat, the cloth was still warm, and her scent lingered in the air. If we leave our smells behind us when we leave a room, surely something of our souls must remain when we leave this life. That line is huge. Whenever you hear me refer to residual souls, that's what I'm referring to. In this video, we're focusing on Franken Mountain, otherwise known as Sir Robert Strong in the books, but there are definitely some similarities between Franken Mountain, Beric Dondarrion, Lady Stoneheart, Jon Snow in the show, and the whites that the show Night King raises from the dead. 
but I'll save that for another video that I'm going to call The Art of Healing. So let's skip forward to Tyrion's trial by combat. As you know, one of Oberyn's goals was to get the mountain to confess to killing his sister. I'm going to hear you confess before you die. You raped my sister. You murdered her. You killed her children. Before the fight, Oberyn puts poison on his spears. His squire's probably doing that right here in the show. At the end of the fight, the mountain confesses. Which probably pissed Tywin off, because they've been trying to plant the murders on someone else who was already dead. So at this point, Tywin wants Grand Maester Bycelle to heal the mountain so that he could properly execute him for his crimes or turn him over to Doran Martell. But Pycelle can't do it. He can't heal the mountain. In comes Kyburn. Kyburn suggests that the poison was manticore venom, even though Pycelle said it was not. Pycelle said it was not manticore venom because manticore venom kills the instant it reaches the heart. But Kyburn suggests that the poison was thickened. Cersei says, thickened how? By combining it with another substance? And Kyburn says, probably not. He believes that the manticore venom was changed with a magical spell. So take that as you may. Personally, like I said earlier, when it comes to magic, I don't believe people like Maester Pycelle, but I do believe Kyburn more often than not. So Kyburn works on the mountain for a bit, and eventually, his screaming is freaking people out, like young Tommen. Cersei says that it's time to put him out of his misery, but Kyburn gets her permission to bring the mountain down to the dungeons, where no one can hear him. Because Kyburn wants to study him some more, quote, Send a knight to slay a knight, and an archer to kill an archer, the small folk often say. To combat the black arts, dot dot dot, implying that he considers himself a wizard, so to say, or at least a specialist in magic. At one point, Cersei has Kyburn give her the mountain's head so that they can send it to Dorne. Some fans think that they actually sent an oversized head of a dwarf or some other person's head, but personally, I do think that Kyburn cut off the mountain's head and sent it to Dorne. In other words, in the books, I don't think that Undead Mountain, Franken Mountain, known as Sir Robert Strong, I don't think he has a head. This was hinted at in one of Bran's visions. So if he doesn't have a head, then clearly magic's involved. Kyron continues to work in the mountain in the dungeons, and Cersei supplies him with people. Two puppeteers, Sanel, and later on, Felice Stokeworth. It's worth noting that Kyburn preferred girls, and I think this is important. I'll get back to this. As the story progresses, Cersei is taken prisoner by the Faith. She notes that only a member of the Kingsguard can fight for her in a trial by combat. So when Sir Arya's Okard dies in Dorne, there's an open spot in the Kingsguard, and in comes Kyburn's new creation, Sir Robert Strong, Frankenmount. Kyburn says that Sir Robert Strong has taken a holy vow of silence. This might be because he is half zombie like we see in the show, or maybe even because he does not have a head, so he can't speak. So what did Kyburn do? First off, very high level, I think Kyburn performed an act of healing, so to say. Granted, it's a very loose usage of the word healing, but one of the brothers called Thoris a mirror healer for raising bear from the dead, and I don't think Zombie Mountain is entirely different. Neither of them eat, drink, or sleep. They both relate to residual souls, but like I said earlier, I'll save that for a video I'm working on called The Art of Healing, where we look at different people, including Night King and Dragonglass. Back to Kyburn. We don't know what he did, but we do know that he is interested in residual souls and magic, specifically blood magic. And it's also worth noting that he did not just kill those girls and harvest their body parts or blood, he implies that they're still alive, but pretty much useless. For example, he says that Lady Felice is not able to feed herself anymore. Jeez. So if I had to guess, Kyburn used blood transfusions and blood magic, and maybe even spells. He used the mountain's body, but sort of infused it with small pieces of the residual souls of the various girls that Cersei sent him in order to calm him down a bunch, because Sir Gregor is a pretty difficult man to control. So the result was a physical beast that has no head and just a hint of a soul. Just a little bit, enough to make him a slave and do his bidding. But you have to wonder, if the Night King rolls up to King's Landing, will he be able to add Zombie Mountain to his dead army? I mean, he's already got giants, which in my opinion could tear the Zombie Mountain in half pretty easily. But still, if the Night King takes control of the mountain from a distance and turns the mountain on someone unexpectedly, that'd be pretty wild. 